Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going over the five things that I don't exactly like about the new Mercedes Benz C Class. Before we get into the video, though, as always, if you can save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. The first thing is the powertrain. Well, I guess I gotta pop the hood, which is actually not gonna be too bad today because it's overcast all day, so it's not like 100 degrees outside and unbearably uncomfortable where I get burned when I try to open up the hood. So anyways, it's off here to the side. It's horrible to find. But we've got a turbocharged two liter four cylinder, goes through a nine speed automatic transmission. Good for mid 200s for the horsepower and then low, th well, just under 300 for the torque, which isn't all that bad. But the C-Class is definitely a lot bigger than it used to be in the past. And so it doesn't feel slow, but it doesn't feel fast either. And I feel like with modern luxury cars, you wanna have luxury and speed. This has the luxury part nailed down, but it doesn't exactly have the speed part nailed down. Something that I think Mercedes should do that I think BMW has been very successful with is do like a true uh, high performance version of this car that's not an AMG. So like BMW has their M cars, but then they also have their like M series cars. Like for example, with the 3 Series, you have like a regular 3 Series and then you have like an M340i, which has the turbocharged in inline six, it's like almost 400 horsepower, and then you have like the full on M car, right? I think Mercedes should do something similar here with their cars is do like the AMG, which is like the crazy high performance version of a car, but then have like an in-between where it still is like luxury, like the normal car, but then it has a little bit more power and performance so that people can get, again, luxury and speed. Number two is certain cheap interior bits. Now, you guys gotta remember, this is a $57,000 car at the end of the day, and it's built by a luxury automaker, and so it has actually pretty solid fit and finish overall, and even though this isn't necessarily like the nicest from a material standpoint, this like whole like, I don't know, grab handle thing, it looks really nice, so like, I'm not gonna complain about that. The thing I'm gonna complain about is, well, these little stocks, very plasticky. At least the end of this actually feels pretty nice, you guys can see. Um, but the shifter, like that super plasticky, and then the paddle shifters as well. This thing that luxury car makers do that I don't understand, they put plastic paddle shifters in their base models, and then they reserve nice paddle shifters for the high-end models. Like, just put nice paddle shifters in all of them, and then just do like crazy ones in the high-performance uh, version of a car. Um, but yeah, it's just like, there's little plastic elements throughout that like just don't match the rest of the materials. Like, look at this on the steering wheel. Like, look at the rest of the material use. And then, like, throughout here, like, all this trim is nice. And then it's just like, I don't know. So I, I think they should definitely bring up a couple of those things. Now, number three is the infotainment system. Oh, boy, this is going to be a fun one to go over. So we just got to start her up. And something that annoys me is this always turns on the radio as soon as you start it up, like, the volume. Like, even if I left the car with the volume off, it still has it, like, slightly on when you pop in. I don't know why they do that. Anyways, first off, the infotainment system, I think is very nicely integrated into the dash. Response time is absolutely fantastic with this uh, infotainment system. And you got like cool animations with it as well. So like overall, really cool system. I'm gonna zoom in here just in case it pulls up. Yep, it pulled up exactly what I thought it was gonna pull up. Anyways, so you guys can see here, if I go to the radio, for example, I've got the Sirius XM on. It is so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> to change stations. Like you have to kind of like drag on the screen and so it's like not super precise. And yeah, not exactly the best system. Now you do have these buttons down here that, oh, sorry, that was out of view. These buttons down here that are a little bit easier to use. But yeah, I mean, sometimes there's little things like that that are slightly um, annoying with it. But my biggest beef with the infotainment system is not that, it's the fact that this screen, because of how it's angled, gets so hot. I tried to use this yesterday when I had this car sitting in the parking lot for a little bit, and I burned the tip of my finger trying to like scroll on the infotainment system because the screen, and right now, there's the sun's not even out and the screen's still pretty hot. So I don't know why that is, but like the screen just is like a heat lamp. So if you get one of these, just be careful if you leave it out in the sun. Number four is no cooled or massaging seats. Now this is something that's not specific to just Mercedes. It seems like every single luxury automaker does this and that is the fact that they don't make cooled seats standard in their vehicles or you have to get a much more expensive vehicle to get cooled seats. So you guys can see you have heated seats uh, and this particular one has seat kinetics which kind of like moves the seat in a weird way. I still don't quite understand it. Like I turn it on and it like moves this part up and then that part and it's not quite a massage but it's almost it's in this weird in between. But anyways, the point that I'm trying to make is 
This is a Mercedes, okay? This is a Mercedes. And so I think that, first off, cooled seats should be standard. I can get cooled seats and a like $30,000 Kia, so I should be able to get it in a $57,000 Mercedes. And then on top of that, I think to differentiate this from the rest of the cars in this segment, Mercedes should have massaging seats, right? Because again, it has this beautiful interior and it's not all about performance, obviously, because this has a turbocharged two liter four cylinder. And so I think to kind of, you know, basically push that whole like, hey, we're the luxury one to go for, add massaging seats to it. So cooled seats, massaging seats, I think that'd be a good way to go. Number five is no remote start. So I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments talking about how there's this, some app that you can get with the car and that'll let you remote start it from the app. But here's the deal. This is the key fob. You guys can see pretty nice and actually has a nice weight to it as well. But this key fob doesn't have remote start on it. And this is not just a Mercedes thing. This is like every single luxury car maker is they will give you this nice expensive luxury car and they won't have remote start on the key fob. Like I can get a $20,000, $30,000 Kia with remote start. I should be able to have remote start on a $57,000 Mercedes Benz. Like again, they can have it via an app. And especially if it's like an app that you have to pay for, I think that's just even more stupid. But they need to also just have it on the key fob so that you can just boom, boom. Because like, frankly, I have several vehicles that have, like I, this is not my Ford, but I happen to have a Ford that has like a whole Ford Pass app where you can remote start from the app. I have used the app zero times. Well, how do I remote start my truck? I just press the key fob twice. So yeah, they definitely need to add that. Now that's gonna sum things up for the five things that I don't exactly like about the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and I'll see all of you in the next video.